Okay, fantastic, fantastic. We're ready to get started. Good stuff. Thank you very much for everyone joining. It should be a lot of fun today. We're going to talk about digital production and lean, lean types of processes, digital delivery. Um, if you joined two days ago, we talked a lot about planning projects well with digital. Today, we're going to be focusing far more on the idea of now you've planned the job, you got to execute and you got to deliver it in the most efficient possible way. And that's where digital can have a big impact. So we have an amazing group of uh, panelists. First, I'd like to introduce Francois. Drum roll, please. Just kidding. We introduce Francois Beaupre. He's a design manager at Gamma USA, custom curtain wall manufacturer. Over a decade of experience in facade design, worked on several high profile buildings, both in New York and Boston. Holds a BN from ETS uh, in Montreal, which is a very famous school. We have a few uh, grads at our company as well. And uh, in his spare time, likes sailing his his yacht off the Monaco coast, which is uh, I think I'm gonna have to come visit you, Francois, next summer. So welcome aboard. Can't see your camera for some reason, but uh, I think you're there. Next, we have uh, Alan Tai. Alan is the digital design and practice leader at Island Exterior Fabricators in Boston, or actually based in New York, but they're also in Boston. His uh, current work focuses on the digital transformation and, and business processes, design, procurement, inventory, manufacturing, logistics installation basically end to end in the past he was a consultant working with front facade consultancy and, and worked with WeWork in their construction innovation group and uh, fun fact he's a developer of elephant plugin for grasshopper and a, and, a, and a grasshopper visual programming guru welcome board island good to have you last but certainly a lot least we have dylan king uh, value stream manager from ag solutions in kansas city dylan has been in the uh, in the glazing industry for a long time, grew up in the glazing industry. It's one of my favorite intros I've ever done. Grew up sweeping the floors in the, in the shop uh, after school and on the weekends and moved his way up into the field after high school, moved into a field foreman role at 20 years old. So running a big team at 20 years old, got some education then moved into project management and now focusing on value stream management, lots of lean processes and all that kind of stuff. So amazing to have you guys join. Thank you very much for taking the time to do this. I know you're all very busy. So this, this panel is going to be a little different. A lot of these concepts we're talking about today can be a little bit abstract, not easy just to talk in a, in a round table. So the panelists have, uh, for our education, have, have, have agreed to do a small presentation each talking about their process and workflows from a digital perspective. And first up is, uh, is Francois. Francois, if you want to take us away and, uh, and show us what you got. All right. Thank you, Ravi, to, uh, for, first for having me and uh, and to be part of this uh, amazing of pan amazing panelist group. So um, let me share my screen. Let me see. Let me know when you see this. Oops. Be beautiful. I think it's coming on now. We can see your your page for logging in. So another page maybe. Show the wrong screen. Much things here. <laughs> right. Some good details there. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Probably stopped working one minute before this, right? And then started. Exactly. Uh, so yeah, you yeah, see no, it, right? <laughs> uh, we see, yes, we can see your screen. Now we see the uh, the presentation view. So maybe you want to swap to uh, display view up in the display settings. Or... Good like that? Uh, I mean, it works, but you can switch display settings if you want at the top there, so we can see the presentation mode. If you go up here. Yeah, that, yeah. Click that and switch, switch to, there you go. There you go. Beautiful. Yeah, we're All ready right, to go. sorry for the, uh, the technical problem. <laughs> no, no worries. So uh, with uh, no further ado, here's the presentation, my seven minute synopsis on the, uh, our digital workflow. Um, so I will talk a little bit about the projects that we're currently doing at Gamma, a very interesting project, and uh, the impact that uh, our the quarantine had on us. And lastly, I would like to talk a little bit of the impact that CMXC did on our processes. So the project that we're working on is a beautiful project located in the art of New York City, right in the middle of Times Square. It's called TSX Broadway. Uh, that's a building located, uh, like I said, in New York, uh, 250,000 square feet, curtain wall and green screen metal panel. Um, 
50 floors, uh, mainly hotel, and uh, 630 feet tall. And uh, the special feature on this building is that there is a, a beautiful LED wall on that. It's going to be the biggest LED wall in New York City. And uh, this wall is interacting also with the facade. The facade has LEDs on the full elevation. And then when there is a uh, motion on this LED, it propagates on the building uh, to create a beautiful effect. And also there is a big opening here on the, on the side there for artists to perform on the, on the street of New York. And then when they don't perform, they close the garage door and then the, the LED screen is, uh, is seamless. So that's the project that the, the team is working on. And how do we do it? So uh, first we, uh, we're establishing a, uh, a Rhino wireframe. And uh, with uh, Alan's beautiful tools, we were able to extract a lot of attributes part of the, part of the model. And all these attributes then uh, educate us on a lot of different things. So uh, this loop here is uh, we are daily we're putting information inside the model. So it's a living document and we're extracting almost daily as well. Then uh, on the fabrication side, so when we have all these data extracted, uh, we create inventor models um, that are driven uh, mainly by the Rhino model. So we create these, these models and then with, uh, again, a lot of scripts, we are able to generate a partial building that uh, we then insert into a Navis simulate model. Uh, that model, we put tons of information in it, Rhino models, Inventor models, AutoCAD models, AutoCAD floor plan, and other trades. And then we run clash detection. From that, we uh, send uh, paperless information to our factory where they, they're able to uh, take our 3D model and uh, use it on their CNC, all that kind of um, paperless. So, but uh, in March, 2020, almost a year ago on that Friday, uh, we were all sitting at a table and then our company told us that we were going to work from home. So uh, some of us were excited, but the big, the big question was, all right, so we have all these big models, all these big things, but uh, we're working on the server. So what are we going to do now? Uh, working from home with a VPN would be impossible. So uh, we scratched our heads that afternoon and th the solution that we found locally was to use uh, Microsoft OneDrive and Microsoft Teams. So that allowed us to kind of seam seamlessly go at home and keep working at it and actually almost be as efficient, if not more efficient than at the office. So that was, that was the, big, the, big, uh, the big revelation that day. That was a, a, bi a big moment. Um, but a month after this, uh, we had another problem. The problem was uh, that most of our, uh, our vendors, uh, they could not produce anymore. They were lacking, the supply chain was all broken and we were not getting uh, material on time. So our assembly line was suffering. Uh, matter of fact, they were not working neither. So everybody was stopped. And um, when they restarted, uh, we had big problem with extrusions. We couldn't get the extrusion on time. It went from six weeks lead time to 16 weeks lead time. So big, big problem. And uh, one thing that uh, we started looking, one of our colleague uh, was on Lincoln on Sunday morning and he says, well, you know what? I think I found a solution for, to get all these, these things to uh, help us. So the solution was to use uh, CMXC, April 9, 2020. That's when uh, we discovered CMXC. Uh, from there, um, it was a game changer. We were able to scan the parts uh, to improve our productivity and then to get live data out of uh, the production. So uh, we were able to know exactly when they were scanning the units, when producing the units. Also when they were able to put them in the crate and we had the visual uh, 
um, a map there that was telling us where things were going. So that was a huge help for us. Um, and uh, we, uh, we were so excited that we even gave the access to our um, client team. Um, so not sure it was a good idea, but they were super excited too. And uh, <laughs> today they're still, they're still uh, looking at it. And it, it, it kind of changed the game a little bit because instead of uh, beating us up all the time, uh, they were seeing the live um, unit being built. And then every time we had a problem, they were working with us to try to solve the problem. So that was, uh, that was extremely helpful. Um, so I think I'm almost up in time. And uh, so that's my small presentation on the, um, our digital workflow. That's amazing. That's amazing, Francois. And, and thank you for sharing uh, your background um, from a digital side and just practical in the industry is incredible. And, and, um, and you already, uh, we're going to talk a bit more about kind of come and lean out of quarantine, which you already teased a little bit in the, in the, in the question section, but uh, that's fantastic. So uh, thanks for sharing. Next up, we're going to move over to Alan. Alan's going to share a little presentation on his work uh, on Island at Island Exterior Fabricators. And uh, Alan, take us away. Uh, is my PowerPoint like uh, working? Yeah, it looks good. Anyone guys see me? Okay, sure. I'll do like a quick introduction of our company. Uh, we're Island Exterior Fabricator. We used to be like uh, kind of well known for fabricating mega panels, usually in the <clears throat> Boston or New York area. But now we're moving more into the fabrication of curtain wall system. And we have three regional office, one in Boston, one in New York, and our headquarter facility or manufacturing facility is in Eastern Long Island, Calverton. <clears throat> we have around 60 design engineers, we have a total of like 400 fabrication personnel in our shops, 10 CNC mills. We're working like, uh, you know, several different ships a day and uh, installing <clears throat> thousand square foot of panels every day. So here's our geographic location. We have like 45 people in Boston, around 60 AEC staff in Calverton, 40 in New York, and total of like uh, close to 350 to 400. Um, trace people in our headquarters. So th these are some of the uh, selected projects that we do. So just to show like a variety of different types of projects. So we do for anything from like terracotta rain screen, brick, <clears throat> brick, ring, brick walls, uh, attached to panels, composite aluminum cladding, and or still like a, sorry, aluminum glass glazing, like a unitized curtain wall panels. So we have like, a, we usually do like very custom <clears throat> designed uh, projects. So everything is kind of, we don't have, we're not like an off the shelf system. We are always like a engineer for, design engineer for different projects. So in terms of our kind of digital business operation, there are like three important sectors that we do inside our company. One is design engineering, one is finance and operation, the other is manufacturing. If you look at this like an uh, overall structure of the company organization, things will start, <clears throat> start with the uh, de design engineering staff, right? We're going to create engineering calculations, shop drawings, installation drawings, fabrication information, bill of material. And we're using like different types of <clears throat> CAD software and BIM tools, uh, including like AutoCAD, with like uh, more for 2D detail development and move into a uh, Revit model to create like a simple um, around like LOD 350 representation that we can generate shop drawings and then move into the fabrication using Rhino Grasshopper and, and or Inventor for fabrication modeling. And these data will be saved into a PDM, like a product data management system. This is some, some current uh, custom design process that we're doing. So we are developing like a portal for example, we also work with design partners that they provide these design engineering data. We're creating like an online portal for them to upload their uh, design information into the portal. And then we do some post-processing to the data and our project coordinator will release those data <clears throat> to the shop. And 
in, in terms of like finance and operation and manufacturing side, we're implementing a new ERP system in our company that manages everything from accounting, human resource, material planning, production planning, inventory, and all, log all logistics operations. And then <clears throat> one of the in addition to the system is CMEXC, which is the model-based tracking system. It is very useful for our client to, uh, or to generate report or for our client to visualize the progress of the uh, overall project. And it will also be very helpful for us internally to track the progress of each of the components or assemblies that we're working with. So if we zoom, the, zoom in a little bit to more like at the project level, this is kind of our overall design to fabrication workflow that we usually start with like a central project model. It can be provided by our, uh, it can be starting from like a contract document 2D drawings or like a model provided by the architect, but we always will kind of rebuild uh, a Revit model that we use either for material takeoff or to generate shop drawings. And then we move into the uh, fabrication model stage. We have like a one-to-one -one fabrication model and we're using different uh, automation process using Grasshopper um, Elephant plugin to generate these fabrication drawings or unfolding uh, drawings or even like uh, the CNC <clears throat> information required by the machine. And then finally, we're after finishing the panels, we're storing them in our yard and then ship to the site for installation and use um, like the model-based tracking to track these uh, progress. So if we're zooming a little bit further into the tools that we're using, so usually at the design phase, uh, start with like a 2D CAD, CAD drawings to develop details, have like a low resolution wireframe model, and then move into one-to-one -one fabrication model, and then generate all the information, <clears throat> fabrication information release that we need. So the important thing for us is to know what resolution of model and information we need and at what time we need to deliver those. So each model kind of like serves its own purpose and we're planning kind of like backward from the day that we're installing the panel. We schedule backward to figure out, okay, when, when are we starting the fabrication? When are we producing the drawings? When are we procuring the material? And, um, and this system is kind of like affecting one, one another, like each of these processes are kind of like interconnected together. And we're trying to make all our different software talking to each other, let the information flow from uh, beginning, starting from design all the way to production. And this is kind of like the uh, seven minute overview of the digital process. Oh, that's great, that's amazing. Thank you very much for sharing. And I know a lot of people that were signing up for this event saw it as almost like an educational, you know, get your credits as a, say, if you're an architect, you know, you're going and learning and, and uh, collaborating with others in the industry. It's fantastic. So last, we're going to finish with Dylan. Now, I, before I introduce Dylan and his presentation, you know, when we started building this product and talking to customers in the, in, in, in the industry, you know, the far majority of, of the industry, maybe on the design side, does some, some 3D stuff, but when it hits the factory floor, it is more of a 2D workflow or a traditional workflow, building you know, projects that are smaller or bigger and, and still have the same problems, same challenges, right? So I think it's a great indication or indicative of, of a larger market, really what Dylan's showing here today and how we can still make big impact, impacts with lean and digital, even if you're not using 3D workflows like we showed, we showed previously. So go ahead, Dylan. Thanks, Avi. Yes, hear me all right. You're a little quiet. I'm not sure if it's just a, yeah, a little quiet. But, yeah, there you go. Real That's problems good. with this uh, computer sometimes, <laughs> so I apologize. Yeah. No, it's good now. You're, you're, you're good now. We're Easy Solutions. Uh, we're a 34 year old company um, that just recently changed its name this year to, to AG in a rebranding effort. We got new leadership. Uh, Chuck Maury came on in uh, 2019 from Harmon, ran Harmon for a long time. And in an effort to uh, grow, you know, scale regionally and nationally, we changed our name and started a, a lean, lean process. We started in October 2019. Perfect timing, right? We got the basics down and uh, everything changed for us there. We actually went live March 1st, 2020. So it's been, it's been, uh, we've learned a lot. But basically, we sat down. Um, 
and started started working through it. Chuck brought it over. He says, "This is what we have to do. This is what we're going to do." And we he was the only one that had any idea what we were doing and how long it was going to take and and what we were really getting into. But sat down as a core group and and defined you know common things that have to happen on every job, even though no job's the same. Everyone's different. We don't do anything near what the uh, what Fran- Francois and Alan are, are talking about here, but we will someday. That's our goal. But we broke our broke our job process down into four gates, and you have to meet the requirements. Uh, gate A is you know four weeks after job award. Main main idea there is just to make sure the project management's involved early. They, it's it's a quick one. It's not hard to get through. You got to basically take a make sure you've seen the schedule, broke down the job at some point, and uh, you know start talking with the general contractor. Gate B is a, a more difficult process. It's a, it's a one-time gate. It's nine weeks prior to for, prior to uh, field installation. We have to, at that point, the foreman's well involved in the job. He's with the project manager, breaking down schedule, breaking down means and methods, and really devising a plan um, for, for how to tackle the job weekly. We break everything down by week. Fabricate one week's worth of work at a time for every job, ship it to site, and uh, that way we don't overburden them and it, it keeps things cleaner that way for us. Also, all material has to be ordered by that point too. So it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a key one to hit if you to ensure your job's going well. And gate C, it's four weeks prior to install and it, it's every week until the job's over, starting four weeks before um, install. The first, first trip through gate C, we require a meeting led by the field foreman. He sits down with um, our shop manager, the project manager, our superintendent, our operations manager, and myself, and we go through the job. And they have to tell us, it's they lead it, it's their plan, how they're going to use their guys, what equipment they're going to need, what we're going to do to uh, efficiently use, you know, efficiently do our work, right? And then um, also, that's when your fabrication packets are, are assembled and together. We put it through our shop data group, they program it into our you guys keep talking about Rhino, but it's a different concept for us. It's a, it's a saw that, you know, it's a CNC machine, basically. We call them the Rhino. And they uh, make sure all that's good to go. We have material here. We have our plan. We have our fabs. We have glass ordered. Everything can flow. And then gate D, that's one week prior to install. Make sure the material's fabricated. We make sure glass is still coming. We make sure we have the guys on site. We make sure we have the equipment there. It boils down to a quick phone call, basically, with the PM, the foreman, shop manager, our delivery coordinator, and myself, just to kind of review where they're at on that week's worth of work, talk about the next week's worth of work, and we even talk about the week after that. It gives us flexibility to, to change things if something's not working. We can change the way we're building frames, change the way we're shipping them, change the way we're creating them. It basically creates a lot of flexibility for us. It's a great thing. And then we ask everyone what we can do differently to help increase efficiencies between all parties. And we're working on that one. It'll come along. Even though, you know, we started in October and we went live on March 20, March 1st, 2020, and the coronavirus happened. And we had to, I mean, we were a paper and manila folder company handing it from person to person constant communication, trying to figure out how to do things. We, we started seeing some good benefits from Lean. Um, it's driving great communication between all parties early and often. The field foremen are getting input and getting buy-in on the schedule. We're holding each other accountable to our promises. And limiting the, the excess material in the field has been one of the greatest things, I think. We're not putting wrong material in the wrong place. We're not damaging it by moving it. There's no extra carrying costs moving it around in the shop. And it also, you know, it gives us the flexibility, like I said, to uh, to change our plan when we need to. If something's not working, we cut a whole job and half of the building's wrong and you just have to rework it all. It's 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 pretty awesome. It's also given us great, you know, it's my job to, to make sure all this works and um, identify issues, root cause them, find the, the issue in the in the process more than anything. It's it's 95% of the time issues come from processes not being right. 
So we're we're chipping away on those, and it's huge the improvements we've made. Efficiencies gains are dramatic as well. It's a it's just all kind of coming together right now. So it's a good time. I'm enjoying the opportunity to share this right now. Also, why it's not a good time is like we're moving our facility right now. Like we have guys moving stuff <laughs> constantly. We're moving to a new 60,000 foot square feet uh, facility with a, a lot better flow than what we have now and plenty of room for our anticipated growth. You know, it's, a, it's not perfect for us right now. It's, you know, ideal layout would be a, a straight line material coming in raw material getting fabricated going out the other side we had kind of had to adapt to a, a u shape but i'm really liking how it's coming together and uh so javi reached out to us in like june or july last year maybe even earlier and asked if we'd be interested in cmexc and we, we really loved it we loved the idea of the 3d models and we uh we worked through it for a while and uh really to come to the conclusion that it's really great, but it just doesn't work for what we do. <laughs> we, we, Javi started and uh, Finney started developing 2D workflow for us and we got back onto it. But then even through, we'll get into this with, you know, some of these questions coming up, I think, but through the process of being at home, being a Manila folder company, handing paper, physical paper to each other, I called Javier and I said, I need this, I need your help I don't need what you offer right now. I, I need to take, you know, 10 steps back and, and climb a ladder. I need a high level view of what we're putting through our shop. Same concept with QR codes, tracking, and uh, with, the, with the end goal to incorporate it fully with CMEXE and what they offer in the 3D models, as well as the 2D workflows. This has been great. It's, we're very excited to really get it flowing. I know uh, we're still working through some things on it, but very excited. That's probably my less than seven minutes introduction. That was great. No, fantastic. And you know, it's interesting that you say the timing, March 1st, 2020, uh, deploying your lean journey. And of course, as a project manager, as a change agent, the timing is poor because, you know, global 100-year pandemic is not great. But then you got to ask yourself, what if you didn't do it, right? So going lean at a time when lean's pretty helpful <laughs> because you can't, you know, work in the same space and stuff like that. I might, I might actually, if you look at it a different way, it's like, best time ever if you're going to make a change like get that lean um you know mentality going when when you're forced to change into uncomfortable areas so okay so we're going to ask a couple questions um first one now francois so you kind of teased a little bit but i love it you're not just a design manager you're a leader of a team right a very large team so you know you're influencing people from the factories that you're working with in, in your in your team so when you know how do you how do you keep your processes lean in, and how has COVID-19 kind of uh, affected this? I know you talked a little bit about that. Maybe you can build, build on that a little bit. Well, I think um, lean process, right? So the lean, the way that I at least understand it is reduce the waste, right? Every aspect that you can reduce waste, you do it. You reduce also uh, redundancy. And then by doing that, you improve your, your, your precision with, with things. So uh, the first thing that uh, when we went out, uh, when we went working from home, uh, so at the office, we had plotters, printers, and tons of different things, and piles of paper everywhere. But uh, working from home had allowed us to not use paper at all. Uh, we did not send any FedEx for the roll of paper to the consultant uh, so uh, the, the design team had embrace of uh, the, the, the fact that we're not going to produce paper from the design. Um, also in the factory, we did that. We, uh, we, by, by creating 3D model only and no fabrication drawing, it, it, it allowed us to create uh, pa uh, paperless environment. So what that means is that Number one, they don't use paper. Number two, we were doing a model already, but by doing the model, and if you have to create the 2D drawings, then now you create redundancy. Uh, so, and, and by doing so, the, the programmers are now using a 3D model and they don't need to use the 2D drawings anymore. Uh, and that, uh, believe it or not, improve the, the precision with, uh, with everything. 
Um, and, and then one last thing that improved the, the lean process is, is uh, the, the mining of data, the real time data. So that's extremely important in the, in the environment that we're in, that we're, uh, I mean, today uh, data is more important than gold, good data. <laughs> so all the data that we can get will uh, allows us to be uh, more lean. That's great. I, I referenced this talk from a Stanford professor, Build the Right It, on Tuesday's session, and what he calls is Yoda, your own data. <laughs> so that's also gold, right? You're bitting your own data, right? And we're going to talk a bit about that in our presentation. We're going to show TSX and all the data that's getting created. So thank you very much. So Alan, on your side, I'm going to change the question a little bit. Um, from, a, from, a, from the outside looking in, it seems like, you know, Island's done quite well to navigate these very challenging times, you know, business is growing, things are doing pretty well, probably benefiting, you know, your systems are helping that. But like, what's your, from COVID-19 perspective, what's your organization's response to this? And how have you taken advantage of maybe an opportunity that came in? Right, I think similar to what Francois was talking about, I mean, the first challenge for us is like collaboration, like remotely, instead of like within the same office. And we're utilizing cloud platforms such as SharePoint, mostly for internal office communication, and being 360 for sharing like uh, uh, design documentation, both from design partner to us and also from us to the shop. And in the, in the process, we're trying to remove the redundancy of duplicating the data because our data are in the same shared location on the internet. So everybody will be able to find the same information, the single source of truth at the same place. And we're using that um, in terms of like releasing into the shop, we are developing custom applications that we send our work to uh, a link kit system. It is actually like an online Kanban system that we use to, uh, to do or schedule our fabrication work inside the shop or production work order inside the shop. <clears throat> and because of you know, the COVID disruption, our factory are disrupted a couple of times due to COVID. And because of this uh, kind of Kanban system, it is a more flexible way to schedule our work. So, you know, if we have like a week that we have to stop, <clears throat> stop the process, you know, the, the thing just stops in the kind of Kanban kind of pipeline. So it stops there, but we know what works are needs to be done. And we know how, how long it will take to get all this work through the uh, production line. That's great. And, uh, Oh, sorry. One more, yeah, the very last thing, similar to Francois said, there is like a change in the lead time of supply chain material. For example, like insulation, we used to get it in like a month. Now it takes like 90 days. There are like these unexpected things. Of course, like extrusion and those other big ticket items is <clears throat> affected the project more, but also these like small items also affect us a lot. And we're kind of like creating these spreadsheets that we share between all the departments telling what is the changes between the lead time. And unfortunately, we have to go against the link principle that we need to order things as early as possible so that you know, whenever we have the design data, we can order things, we'll order them immediately so that these like disruptions of mid supply chain won't affect us. Well, uh, I guess you know, security of supply will trump lean if you're in a in a in a in a, in a risky risk environment, right? So I mean, it makes sense to be adjusting on the fly as needed. Um, we do have a plan, a, a little demo here that we're going to jump into pretty soon. But one more question for Dylan: Maybe um, you talk about the future a lot, Dylan, when we when we get together, um, and, and technology. There's lots of stuff happening um, in this world, um, and lean is a more than mentality. It's not necessarily a software, right? You can fit tools to, to be lean. Maybe if you had to pontificate about the future, Dylan, what would you say in the 10 years, 15 years, you'd like to be doing at, at 8G or, or what you hope the industry is doing more of leveraging di digital? Oh, you're, I think you're muted or we can't hear you. Oh, get closer. How about now? That's oh, yeah, 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 you're good now. <laughs> I really like this computer, just not that part of it. I think everyone's uh, used to this by now, so it's okay. <laughs> yeah, it's it's funny you say that we, not six months ago, we had a foreman that thought Lean was a computer program. Uh, so <laughs> it uh, it is coming around. Now I think you know with the with our you know short term probably 
three to five year goal. It's full integration with CMEXE. It's running both 2D workflows and 3D workflow uh, flows through it along back to our dashboard that you guys are basically building for us, a fabrication dashboard that uh, holds all our documents. It's web-based, everything's there. Instant answers, instant collaboration, live on, you know, all of our, all of our field department have iPads and computers and, you know, all our project management sits in front of computers all day. I think it's, it's just going to really speed up information, right? And have it all in one spot where it's shared across all platforms. Everyone's talking the same language. Um, I'm excited for it. I'm, I'm very excited for it. It's just a matter of just to get in there now, right? <laughs> Yeah, sticking with it. So um, we're going to start the demo in like a minute here, but there was a question that came in front. So I'll put to uh, everyone that's on this call. If you have a question, just pop it in the Q&A. Even if we don't get to it now at the end, we're going to hang out for five, 10 minutes after we can answer them if you want, um, if, if the panelists are able to. But Francois, this question is for you. Um, if you're only going to use paperless information to the shop, right, which we, we understand your workflow, how, do you, how are you guys managing the QA side of things? Good question. Because, um, I mean, we have the CNC that they don't need the paper. Uh, the only person that needs paper is the QAQC. Um, and that was the biggest hurdle to, to, uh, to go over. But there were several ways of, of going about this. Uh, typically, uh, the guy in the shop, they will, they will check everything on the parts. But because it's coming from a 3D model and it's programmed directly from the 3D model, the chances of missing operation on the part is dramatically decreasing. Um, and that's a risk that you're willing to take when you go that way. Um, so we, um, the, what happens when the part typically is wrong is that uh, the operator is not pushing the parts far enough on the stop or uh, a tool broke during the cycle or the operator put it uh, the wrong side uh, or, or similar things like that. So within five minutes, just looking at the 3D model and the QAQC personnel looking with the laptop, and measure few keyholes, they will be able to know if the part is good or not. So if you have 50 different holes, they're not going to check 50 holes. Um, so it has been a big change in our, in our process that they're only looking at key elements now on the extrusions. Uh, but uh, to answer in short your question, they're using a laptop with the model loaded on the laptop. Right, right. Okay, that, that makes sense. Um... Okay, so we're going to spend the last 22 minutes here and we're going to do a little bit of an updated demo on CMEXE and trying to take some of these principles, these learnings from Dylan, Francois and Alan and working with them for the last uh, number of months and, and coming up on a year now um, and, and putting it into practice. So today I'm joined by Finney and Ishu from our team. So Finney's going to start sharing his screen. Uh, and first I'll describe what CMEXE is. CME CMEXE.io is an end-to-end -end digital production track and trace system. So we're trying to connect design outputs, production workflows, logistics, installation, and sign-off in a single digital layer. So the idea is not just between the four walls, but also onto the site and into the customer experience side of things. Um, so we built the product with next-gen technology. So this is a, what you're seeing now is a web-based 3D model viewer that we built uh, to support this. And the idea is that it can be shared through a link and viewed on any mobile device. Um, why did we build this technology? So over the last five years here at CADMakers, we built uh, a digital fabrication focused service business where we work a lot with you know, mass timber fabricators, facade fabricators, you name it. And as we do you know, some of this work, which we think is fairly fancy at times, we, we would talk to the, to the customers like, okay, once you're done the, the design, once you've done the modeling, like, what happens after that, right? So what happens on the factory floor? And of course there's some ERPs and different systems floating around. But what we've learned is generally what happens is things break down into paper travelers or certificates, paper and spreadsheets. <laughs> so it's a track production. And this is uh, indicative of the whole industry, right? It's not just a, uh, uh, just the, the, you know, the smaller firms, it's small, big, it doesn't really matter. It's, it's kind of a, a, a industry standard. So that, that process, while it's maybe less costly and more foul driven, easier to use potentially at times, 
It lacks data intelligence, it's prone to error, right? There's lots of expediters needed to find parts in the factory. And you know the, the experience for the customer is not quite what it could be when you're sending a flattened file as an email for the report on, on status instead of just a link that updates in your customer's, your client's pocket. They take out their phone, they push refresh, and they can see where all parts, assemblies, and cargo are at at all times, right? So that's why we built it. So we're gonna introduce three personas. So Finney, who you're seeing the screen right now, he's the production manager persona. Ishu, who's going to share after, is going to be the installer persona. And I'm going to be the client persona. I have an iPad here. I'll show you. So to get started, first thing you want to do is set up a job. So this is where we spent a lot of time over the last couple months trying to figure out how you're going to set up jobs when you have various types of CAD, BIM software being used, right? So if you're using Inventor versus SolidWorks versus Katia, you know, everyone does different uh, part naming conventions. How are we going to handle this, right? So to make it open BIM or like an open system that can support, you know, we can support step file, IFC, FBX. We've made it really easy lately uh, or in this newest release to set up your job. So the first thing you're gonna do in the 3D workflow is upload your model, right? So you upload a model step file, that's gonna take you to the next step. So we've already, uh, so when you upload the model, we're gonna cook it. We grab th things like part length information, naming conventions, some, we, we grab some attributes from the model. And then after that, what you're gonna do is you start doing your tagging. So what we've done, we're pushing this week is a much faster way to do kind of instance and reference tagging. So right here, we're just gonna search by curtain wall. It's gonna find all the curtain wall panels and you're gonna tag it. Inside that tag, what it's doing is there's stored workflows and uh, types of parts, things like this, that's already been set up in your organization for curtain wall in this case. So if you do curtain wall and your curtain wall process the, the work, the flow is about the same every time, depending on what factory you are or whatever, you can store that, that workflow inside there. Now, in this workflow, what you're going to see here is there's, you can have a workflow for in-house fabrication, you can have a workhouse workflow for outsourced fabrication, and the workflow will be slightly different. So we're going to drill into one of these. This workflow is basically the steps that you're seeing inside the model in the dashboard to go from raw materials fabricated, shipped, installed, signed off on site. So what you're seeing here is the ability to actually build control into your process. So you say, what user persona can do, like what profile is allowed to progress the status from you know, order shipped to received on site? And is there any requirements, right? Is they, do they have to set up a cargo workflow, for example, before they can go from this step? So this is a way for you to build in a system like you, that user cannot move it to the next status unless they fill a certain requirement, right? And that's all stored in those tags and you tag it now very, very quickly. So you can set up a job coming from inventor versus whatever other software in, in like less than five minutes. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is talk about roles, I believe. Uh, also that you can see cargo types, traveler types. Traveler is a digital traveler. So replacing the paper traveler that we've learned a lot about. Um, next, we're gonna talk about roles. So it's really nice thing we have teams, the concept of teams. So instead of having to invite one people one by one and each to each other, User permissions and roles are very important in this product. When you start getting into the, you know, the gammas, the islands, the AG solutions of the world, you might be doing 20 jobs at once, 10 jobs at once with different clients, different supply chains. You don't want people seeing uh, different projects, right? So you can actually get a team, fabricator team, onboard them into your project all at once, right? So it's, it's much more uh, uh, seamless that way. Good. So let's move to the next thing. So you set up your project. Now the production manager is going to start uh, setting up production. First thing we're going to do in the 3D workflow is we're gonna uh, take a look at that model that we've uploaded and set up a, a cut list. So what, when you uploaded that model, we call it cooking, we're grabbing a bunch of information. So for 1D and 1.5D nesting, we built an AI-based 1D and 1.5D nesting tool. So it already has read the model, something like what Francois said, so there's some information that's already there. We calculate that when it's coming up and you can set up a nesting job. So we're talking about intermediate mullion, profile 1A, material type, and then what you can do is start setting, putting this into a cut list and then running it. So from say you have a TSX that has whatever, 8,000 panels, I can't remember the exact number, but roughly that each release might have 500, 600, 1,000 extrusions that need to be cut. In, in a lot of softwares and a lot of workflows right now, that's kind of a one by one process. You got to you know, upload that information into a nesting software, generate a cut list, and then take that, put that into a traveler or something like that. What we're going to do here is we're going to run rapidly different nesting solutions from the material, from the model that was uploaded. So you're kind of setting the stock ID, you're defining some light stock lengths, you're saying, okay, does it a kerf blade? Is it this types of cuts? Is it miter cut, no miter cut? These kind of things. 
and then you're going to run it. And you could just keep running it. Uh, it's what, what it's doing right now is when you push this crazy, is that done? Oh, excuse me, it's fast. Optimize is a small, small data set. So uh, you, you kind of run different uh, iterations and it gives you like a SVG look of, of what that cut would look like. So you're minimizing waste basically and minimizing waste saves costs. So <laughs> pretty much what it all comes down to. So if you have you know thousands of extrusions that need to be cut, this is a can be a, a challenging process at times. So we're gonna nest uh, and find the best possible optimized output for this for these extrusions in this case, the aluminum profile, let's say. And then once we've picked the best, we're gonna push that into a traveler. So a digital traveler. And that digital traveler is what can be, so we create a job order, let's say that there's whatever, X number of, of uh, travelers or X number of, of, uh, of release packages or, or kits, a kit apart. It goes into the factory and then you can start tracking the travel. What's a traveler? So in lots of cases, when we were starting this product, building this product, there's literally a piece of paper that goes along with the carts on the, in, in the factory floor. And then you have like whatever, 50 parts on the, on the cart and you have a paper that says, here's all these 50 parts and they have to be, you know, saw, go through the saw and then they get assembled and it gets glazed after, let's say. So what we use, we group all those into uh, children and then you have one parent QR code. And now you can keep this digital uh, or you can actually just print this and then use your phone or, or an iPad on the factory floor to still have a digital thread, but have a physical piece of paper on the cart, cart if that's what people want. And that can feed into the production workflow. So now you start tracking your process from the traveler. So you, instead of having QR codes for 5,000 individual parts, you might have one Q card for 5,000 children and then mass move them through the production process with a single QR code and a single workflow, if that makes sense. Next, we're going to get into uh showing the crates i believe right we're going to go into crates so grouping uh panels or any type of prefabricated element that's coming from the factory you can start planning which crates or which panels are going to which crates and tracking that as well so the crate gets its own qr code assemblies can have their own qr code even parts can have their own qr code and it kind of you know parts and assemblies can go into crates crates get shipped to the job and they get taken apart and put back onto the job right so where anything that is being fabricated in a factory shipped and installed on site is a great use case for this product okay so now that we've set up the job we've kind of set up the production we're going to talk about the uh the user persona of the install installer and we're going to switch to issue and issue is going to share from his phone what it would be like as a as a as a person on site receiving a panel and then installing it on the factory or in in the building, right? So Ishu is going to share a screen. We're going to see his phone. All right. So just to re recap, the uploading model in this case, we grabbed the parts, we nested, we created a, a traveler of a group of parts that need to be produced and fabric fabricated, glazed, and shipped. We, we defined to find a workflow based on teams. Now we're looking at the persona of the person on site. On your phone, you can view the model, okay? You get the model. Next, you can, what you're gonna do is you're gonna go in and, and have the mobile. The mobile site has a simplified view for this user persona. He's gonna scan the QR code and we're gonna progress the status from, so once you scan the QR code in the application, it's gonna show you three things you can revert you can you can flag something let's say there was a defect or you can progress you also can store information so we talked about this earlier so you can look at the shop drawings that are associated with this this unitized curtain wall panel so you can view the shop drawings directly linked to that status and then you can close that you can you can take a picture as you're progressing add a note so we're going to say you know no defect installed now once you're doing this What's very interesting, we're going to show you after is the analytics that come with this because you're getting timestamps of everything that's being done by every user persona that's reported into a dashboard. So now he's progressed this to installed at, at this time, and this is on site. So you can either do it one by one as you're going, or you can go on the fa into the shop or sorry, into the trailer at the end of the day and say, okay, I installed 25 panels today. Let's move them all here. You can associate all the pictures, which is really useful for in a, in a COVID world to get cute, you know, sign off when you take pictures, okay, install these panels, take a picture of it, prove that it happened, timestamp by who, and then like send it to someone to approve, right? So we're gonna stop sharing there. We're gonna go back to the production manager who's sitting warm in his cozy factory. Maybe he's actually at home <laughs> these days, but uh, he's, he's gonna go in here and say, okay, I can, I can see what's happened at any time. So I can see those, that whole panel has been updated to installed. 
You can also see uh, you know, a little dashboard that shows everything that's happened in the last you know, X, Y, Z time. Uh, we're actually gonna, yeah, thank you, thanks to Francois, we're gonna switch to the TSX dashboard. So the project he talked about today, we're gonna show the actual project, I believe you have it here. Oh, you're just showing history. So history tab is keeping track of everything. So you can see now issue at this time, put curtain wall six, it was uh, at, at this exact time, moved it to this next status, right? Keeps a full traceability of, every, of everything that's happened here. Um, now let's move over to TSX uh, and show that please. So this is live data. Sydney, don't push anything wrong, right, Francois? He's looking at us right now. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. But uh, this is live, and this project's happening. So, um, what you, you know, when I start getting some interesting analytics, so let's say, show me all the uh, fabrication that happened in December. So we're gonna search by December of 2020 uh, through to the end of December, and it'll tell you. Now it can be broken down by role. So like the fabricators, here's exactly what happened. You have the, an average of eight panels per day, progressed, status is progressed. Uh, you can see uh, pre-assembled, assembled, and you can start to like filter that data, which is kind of interesting. When we started building this product, we got a lot of feedback from managers saying, hey, this is great. I can report exactly where all my parts and assemblies are at in a matter of seconds. It used to take me six hours to find the parts in the shop floor. And that's fantastic. But what some for buy-in of going digital, which is a good lesson learned for all of us, we got a lot of feedback from the, the people on the factory floor, right, that are doing the work. What, what do I get out of this, right? What's useful for me? Well, this is useful. You can start getting good analytics on how much how productive you're being. If you're having, if you're slowing your production for whatever reason, you can go back at this and say, why was I, you know, 20% slower this week? Was it a more complicated panels? Did I have a certain batch that was I didn't have the materials? Was was the ordering off or something like that? So you can kind of filter through this and get nice analytics uh, from this. So thanks, Francois, for letting us share this. Okay, so now the last thing we're going to do, I believe, is we're going to go, and I'm actually going to share as the client, right? What's that? Huh? Oh, we missed a big major part of our presentation because I got excited. So now we've shown the 3D workflow from end to end. Now we're going to show the 2D workflow. Okay, so this is where we're at with the 2D workflow. When we, when we went to market, started talking with fabricators all over the world, vast majority are in the shop floor you know, they're running their saws with, let's say, DWG, DXF files, right, and, and a 2D workflow. So what we have here is the ability to track and do everything we showed today from QR codes, you know, user personas, profiles, but there's no model, right? So what you do is you enter your bill materials first. That can be grouped by an in, in HG selection uh, situation like, uh, you know, a release or a lot or uh, a batch. So we're going to build all this this week. It covers either a job or multiple jobs, however you want to set it up. And all those tags that we showed from earlier is exactly the same. So you're still going to be able to group your workflows. You can start setting times to say, okay, I need to have this uh, release done by this date. And, and then you can just visually see how you're progressing through the statuses for that total lot without having a model to start with, right? So you still have nice you know, UI, user interface, you can still track stuff, but you just know there's no 3D model to look at and it's all done kind of in the dashboard, right? So you can you can say, okay, buy a lot, what are we, what are we releasing? And then share this information that this, this um, dashboard can be shared with any uh, stakeholder at any time, uh, right from a link that updates as you go. So if you wanna share this to your client or a third party or your supply chain for whatever reason, you just share a link or you can onboard them into the project. So share, sharing a link requires no credentials and uh, onboarding them into your project, they require having a role in a, and, and, and having the proper credentials. Okay, so let's finish with the persona of the client. So I'm going to go here and say, as you can see, I'm, I'm a bit blurred, but I'm the client, I got an iPad. Uh, I'm gonna go into uh, stay on mute, search to mute it. And I'm going to share my card, share my screen. Okay. Hopefully you can see this soon. So same thing here. So I, this is a link. This is just a link that Finney has dropped in here. This is a, anyone can see us. And now I can actually report all that same information. Uh, at, at, oh, I didn't refresh the link. That's why. So let me refresh the link here. So it's going to run. I should be able to see what issue and Finney just did. So it's loading here. Again, this can be in the pocket of, of a phone, iPad. iPad's one of the most practical ways to use it. Um, as I'm watching that, it, it doesn't have to be Windows. It could be anything that's prefabricated, like this prefab mechanical room that you could report on, say, uh, spools. So you could say, okay, district, uh, district uh, you know, hot water, spools, 
it's been installed, it's not installed, where's it at, the status. So same idea. So anything that's being fabricated, Windows is a big part of what we're focusing on, but anything that you're prefabricating. So let's go back here. And it's loading now. All right. Had it all set up. Of course, it doesn't want to work right when you set it up. So the idea is that this is accessible anywhere at any time. And then you just push report, assembly, and there you go. That's There's the green uh, installed panels that Isha just did. So if I was, you know, you know, 10,000 miles away and I'm a client that cares about, like Francois said, where's my work in progress? You know, can I bill against work in progress? Can I bill against proving when I get uh, materials at, on my factory and they're in work in progress? I actually show the client that we're at at all times and then work through any kinks. It's a really nice way to uh, report on status, cargo, you name it. So fully mobile optimized. Okay, I'm gonna stop sharing there and stop share and then we'll wrap it up. Is there any questions? Uh, we have one question. I think that's it. So we're, we're a few minutes early. I just wanted to say we'll hang out here, Francois and Dylan and, and Alan, we'll, we'll hang out here. Just to wrap up, um, you can go to cmexe.io. Uh, the business model is unlimited users, uh, monthly and, and, and annually. We're very passionate about trying to get as many people in the organization to go digital, make it as easy as possible. You can request a demo and we're happy to show this product to you. Um, Francois, Dylan and Alan, I wanna say thank you very much for taking the opportunity to share this with, with us. It's been a good ed educational experience today, learning about the different uh, workflows from big, big, highly complicated projects with uh, integrated supply chains to medium sized projects. They all have the same problem. They wanna be lean, wanna be efficient and deliver the project digitally. So it's fantastic. So thank you very much.